the more you get to know me, it's not about, like, everyone's got a copy of the book. I wanted everyone to have a copy of the book because a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about, blood sugar stabilization, how the body works hormonally, some of the, the, the concepts I'm going to share with you are in the book. But it's not about you believe it, you know, being partnered with Venice Nutrition or Wellness Centers of America. That's not why I'm here. I love nutrition. And I created this program. I'm going to share, briefly share my journey in the industry so you can have an understanding of who I am and what I stand for. And what I really want each of you to get out of this is some nuggets of information that you can share with your patients, even if you're 100% satisfied with your nutrition right now. I think there's always additional information that can take your skill set as a health professional to that next level and help your patients understand. Because, you know, when we look at where we stand right now as a society, you know, the, the organize, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, and that's OECD is, a, is an organization that looks at world economies. Hey, you, my friend. Could you read your book? Here you go. What's your name? Thank you. Dan. Yeah, nice to meet you, Mark. Good to meet you. So when we look at this, there are an organization that looks at world economies. And obesity is at such a high level in our society right now that by 2010, 75% of the American adults will be overweight or obese. On top of that, you look at UCLA released a study in 2007. 83% of obese patients gained back all of their weight within two years after a restriction diet. So what we're seeing is that when people starve themselves, we already know the outcome. They're putting it back on. And then we look at that at the same time, the weight loss industry is the highest it's ever been in that annual revenue, and the pharmaceuticals the highest it's ever been. So think about this. You have more people than, their, than ever investing in their health. And at the same level, we are regressing rapidly as a society. You know, my background, I played soccer in college. Went to Cal State Northridge. I'm from Los Angeles. Well, I'm from the Bay Area, and then I played soccer at Northridge. Growing up, I ate whatever I wanted. You know, I trained hard, worked just, you know, five hours of exercise, you can eat what you want, and you stay lean. Studied nutrition, and I'm a nutritionist and kinesiologist. And I was, and throughout my education as a soccer player, I'd go to my dietitians and I'd say, you know, how can I take my body to the next level? That's why the athlete side excites me. You know, as an athlete, how can I take the next level? And they had no answers for me, because everything was still based upon calories in versus calories out. Everything was still based upon the food pyramid healthy eating, but nothing was cutting edge. So, you know, I got my degree in nutrition, kinesiology, and I really didn't enjoy my education that much because I didn't feel like I got enough of the nuggets I was looking for. But then something happened to me. Right after I finished playing ball, I kept eating poorly, stopped exercising, and I went from 190 pounds to 250 pounds. Gained 60 pounds in a six month process. Six month period. I went from 10% body fat to 24% body fat. So what did I do? What many of us do? Many of your patients do. I freaked out. And I went on a high fat, high protein diet called the, um, it was called the anabolic diet. It was a ketogenic diet. Cut all my carbs, cut my calories to 1500 calories, started training again two hours a day. And within four months, dropped all of the fat, got down 185 pounds, 4% body fat, and I looked amazing, and I felt horrible. And for the next four years, I lived as a fitness model. Everything about me was about my body. And I looked great, but I was miserable. I lived for my cheap meals. And I was the most unbalanced I've ever been in my life. So you think about it. Growing up, I used exercise to stay lean, which many, maybe some of you have, but I guarantee you, your patients do that. How many of you work with men who were a high school athlete or a college athlete, and life shows up, they get a job, they take on their kids, and now what used to work for them no longer works for them because they can't exercise that way anymore. That was me. Many people you can relate to. Because my nutrition, I had a hole in it. Then what do we do? Then we start the diet. Okay, well I can't exercise, so let me restrict and starve myself. And what happens? You lose that. You may get that temporary weight loss and then life pushes back. So after four years of living the fitness model, as I go to Northridge, I was running a gym, I was doing nutrition, I was managing the gym, running nutrition and personal training. And I was putting every single client that I was working with on a ketogenic diet. So they come to me looking for results, and I help them and get those temporary results, they, get, they drop that fat, look great right after three months, four months, and then guess what happened? It all started pushing back. See, I write about in the book how I grew up watching my mom, who was a chronic yo-yo dieter. 
And I saw her drop 50 pounds, and then three months later put it all back on plus some. And each time, that hit her a little bit harder and a little bit harder and a little bit harder. So when I was seeing myself do the same exact thing to patients that I was doing to my mom, I realized something had to change. In addition, my wife, who I write about in the book and, and I'll share with you in this, is uh, yeah, I met her at Cal State Northridge and she's been, she's been my everything and my sound of reason. So over those four years, everything about me was about my body and nothing was about balance. And she said, you know, Mark, something has to change. So I took a step back and I realized the clients I'm working with are rebounding. I'm not living a balanced life at all. I'm obsessed with my body. Why can't you look great and feel great? Why can't you have it both ways? And you can. See, that instead of using when we look at this, instead of focusing on calories in versus calories out and deprivation, what if we shift our mindset and use nutrition to create internal hormonal balance? What if we focus on stabilizing your blood sugar. See, my background in anatomy and physiology, I understood blood sugar. But I never looked at it, I never connected the dots. And I guess that's my problem with our government and the way we're getting information right now. Is that I think everyone in here understands glycolysis, you understand parts of the, you know, you understand the endocrine system, you know blood sugar stabilization, but no one really is connecting the dots of how do you take that and actually work that into someone's world. So at that point, I realized that the solution was good about blood sugar stabilization. And what blood sugar is, and I'll go back to that. What blood sugar is this. Think of a baby. So a baby feeds every three to four hours. Breast milk is protein, fat, carbohydrates. They stop eating when they're satisfied, they eat again when they're hungry. From the moment of birth, actually the 12th week in the womb, that's when the baby, a baby starts, uh, uh, in, uh, fetus starts stabilizing the blood sugar. From the moment of birth, that's how our body stabilizes and creates energy. Everyone here, uh, good with glycolysis, correct? How glucose, how we create ATP. It's all through blood sugar stabilization. First year of life, every doctor visit, we have a son, he's six years old. Two months into it, everything's about how's your baby feeding, how many meals are they taking in, Everything's about, are they getting the five to six times? Are they having the balance? Are they having breast milk or formula? Are they satisfied? How's that four, four month visit, six month visit? After that first year, because the baby now weighs enough and has enough stored reserve, the height weight charts come out. Everything's based upon, if they weigh a certain amount, they're okay. We don't talk about food anymore. Everything shifts to just do what your parents are doing. When we look at why 75% of our society is gonna be overweight or obese, by 2020, is because no one's understanding food. So when we look at blood sugar, rather than using food to lose weight, you use it to create hormonal balance. 